All right, I'll say, how are you all this evening of your time as you create time to exist? Thank you very much. We begin this interaction this evening of your time with the entitlement threshold of believability. The idea is that many times within your society and many other societies, not just yours, but the idea is that the concern comes up of a particular way to measure, if you will, your own timing. One of the explorations of this particular form of physical reality is the idea of timing itself. You are within an existence that does create, or shall we say you, within that existence, create the notion of time. And this does afford the subject, or the, shall we say, nuance of timing, the unfoldment of events, the unfoldment of ideas. Therefore, very often, individuals will, in that sense, wish to measure or get some sense of what their timing is. Therefore, we introduce, not for the first time, though perhaps through this channel, the idea of the threshold of believability meter. What this allows you to do is hone in on any particular project, idea, or event with which you wish to unfold. Hone in on what is right now in the moment you are doing the measuring, the timing. For you always contain within you that ability, the ability to determine with your existing beliefs in place your timing. Allow me now to introduce the threshold of believability. May I have a volunteer? Certainly. All right. Thank you very much. And please speak up for the purposes of this demonstration. Is there a particular project that you, in that sense, are involved in within which you wish, in that sense, to let yourself in on the timing? Yes. All right. Can you state what it is? Uh, developing a center at the lake. All right. The way the threshold of believability meter, if you will, works is very simple. I will ask you a particular question, and if it is your tendency... Answer it with no hesitation, with no doubt. Yes, if you will. All right? All right. The rest of you observe. Do you believe, beyond the shadow of a doubt, absolutely 100%, that this project will be manifest in full form within 10 of your years? Yes. All right. That is the speed with which I request you answer at. Now, at some point, there may be a hesitation. If that happens, simply allow it. You will not be able to, quote-unquote, help it anyway. Do you believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that that project will be manifest in five years? Yes. In three years? Ah, hesitation. Yes. This is how the threshold of believability meter works. The point at which you hesitate, even slightly, is right now, in this given moment, a very accurate measure of the timing it will take. What this allows you to do, however, once you have established that timing, is to decide whether you wish the timing to be more accelerated or whether you are happy with it just as it is. Now, what determines the length of time that it will take are the beliefs that you have. So, as we have shared many times, the only way to change a particular belief that you have is to first own it, is to first acknowledge that you have it. Very easy with the preferential beliefs. A bit more hesitant are you with the ones you wish not to have. But paradoxically, in order to change any of them, you first must own them. So first of all, by allowing yourself with that even slight hesitation, you have at least owned what you feel within your mind, if you will, to be the most likely time frame.
Now, may I ask you a simple question? Is this the time frame that you desire? Are you there? It's, it's the time frame that seems real to me. All right. That was not my question. However, thank you for the information. Is this the time frame that you desire? No. All right. What is it? And this is how, in that sense, you can change the threshold. For, again, the mere knowing of what the timing is allows you to look at particular ideas, particular beliefs that you have, and your willingness to look at them and perhaps decide, if you wish to, to change them can, in the next given moment, change that timing quite greatly. Therefore, allow us to use what you have discovered. What is it that you believe that perhaps you wish not to believe in that sense that has you believing that it will be three years even though you prefer it to be less? That there are things that I need to accomplish before the center can be established. All right. Can you be more specific? And why would they need take that long? Uh, there's the establishing of a, of a home base in Waterbury, the building of a chiropractic practice, uh, the writing of a book, and uh, the expansion of uh, my contacts and the, and the growing awareness of people of who I am and what I'm about. All right. Why do you wish it to be sooner than the three-year time span? Because I'm anxious to get it on the road. All right. So what must you believe in that sense in order to be projecting a time span which is more lengthy than you desire? That it's going to take this long. One moment. What would your more preferred time span be? I'd like to be fully operational in three years. All right. Well, that was, in that sense, the time span with which we had come to. So you are already there. Well, that looked like three to five. No, the idea is we asked five. You said yes, no problem. We said three. You said, oh. Oh, so that means it's So it. three, in that sense, is the idea. And perhaps, again, the reasons with which we were not able, in that sense, to drum up particular beliefs is this is your preferred time span. May I have another volunteer? One who perhaps feels that they wish to have something occur sooner than they feel that it might. Sure. All right. Do proceed. Okay. Um, I would like to produce a musical. Called All right. How exciting. Thank you. You could sound a bit more excited about it, by the way. <laughs> I'm getting hesitant already. <laughs> All right. Very good. Thanks for noticing. Okay. And? What would you prefer to be the time span with which you would do it? Uh, my preferred time span <coughs> would... would Honestly, be about three months. Oh, do you believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that you can do it within two of your years? No, close. All right, five. Yeah, oh, yes, yes. All right, four. Yes. Three. Yes. Two. Ah, all right. Uh, right there. <laughs> now, why do you believe? that something that you prefer to manifest in three of your months would take as long as two of your years, even though the actual writing, quote-unquote writing, is already almost complete. Right. Yes, I don't have all the means in my hand. Ah, ah, ah. You have all the means in any given moment at your disposal. Perhaps you are expecting that a particular set of needs is the only way that you will allow it to transpire. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. All right. Yes, my thinking in this regard may be uh, a little too limited. All right. Is there a particular belief that seems to stand out most strongly as the one that is preventing you? 
from accomplishing it in more of a preferential time frame. You have two beliefs. One concerns the general understanding of pro progress in the, in the area of musicals. I feel that the general consensus is almost that it, 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 it takes two to three years minimum. All right, so there is your first belief. What else? Mm -hmm. uh, well, the second one is, is uh, money. Money is very difficult to find, uh, particularly these days we're, when we're in the midst of um, a recession. Have you ever heard of individuals upon your planet whose first play took off like a rocket with no money? No, I haven't. <laughs> oh. But, but I can, now that you mention it, I can conceive of that happening. <laughs> the idea is it happens all the time. And those individuals, the only difference between them and you are definitions, beliefs. If you most strongly believe it will take two to three years, then it is no wonder that the threshold of believability meter bared that out. It is an accurate gauge in that way. What would you prefer to believe? Prefer, I would definitely prefer that this, this be in, in the midst of production in three months. All right. Now, what will you now do? What steps will you take? What actions will you apply to begin to get the ball rolling? Now that, now that I uh, understand that that's a distinct possibility, uh, I will devote all available spare time to working on that project. Now, if this is indeed so, and you have looked at this and you are not just placating Bashar. No, I'm so. <laughs> let us do the test again. Okay. Do you believe beyond the shadow of a doubt that you will manifest that project within four of your years? Yes. <coughs> Three. Yes. Two. Yes. One. Yes. Six months. Hesitation. <laughs> The idea is, look how much closer you have gotten it. Now, at this moment, based on what you have just found, just discovered, just consciously transformed, it will only take six of your months. But you will always have the option in the next given moment to begin to live as the quote-unquote old you. You are that powerful. So the idea is, if you take the momentum that you have just created, and allow yourself to, in that sense, skateboard upon it, it will take that much less time. Thank you very much for your volunteering. Thank you. This is the overall idea anyway, and this can be applied by any individual. When you find hesitation, that is, again, an accurate gauge of where the timing is most likely to play out. When you look at what you are believing, that has you separating what you desire from, in that sense, what you feel to really be true, you can begin to look at those beliefs. Certain of them you may very well wish to keep. The ones you wish to change by even posturing in your mind the change and running through the threshold of believability once again. You can see the effect in timing that beginning to live the new beliefs would have, and it can be and usually is quite dramatic. However, as always within these interactions, it will always boil down to the action step. When you discover what the old belief was, then through your imagination, you can picture how that old belief allowed you to feel. Feelings, emotions are the results of belief systems. So you can always extrapolate how you would feel if you use your fertile imagination, if you had any particular belief. If you allow yourself to see how the beliefs that you have already that you do not prefer allow you to feel, you can then extrapolate how you would think feeling that way, therefore how you would act. And you can see how that original belief had particular corresponding actions. Now, using that same facility of your imagination and conjuring up with it the new preferred belief, you can perform the aforementioned process just as well. You can allow yourself, again, now picturing with all the faculty of your imagination, the new belief 
allow yourself to feel how it would feel were that already so. Once you feel that, you're more than halfway there to changing to the new preferred belief. For then, feeling that way, you will have particular corresponding thoughts and act as though a person would act who had the new belief. This is what changes the reality. Your willingness to act as though you have the belief you prefer to have. Again, and we remind you constantly of this. Also, you can consider this for the first time. But the idea is that you already do this with the beliefs you don't prefer. You already have a particular belief. In general, the beliefs we are speaking of are ones that you have allowed to be quote-unquote subconsciously ingrained. And this simply means that on some level, at some point in your life, perhaps your younger childhood, you have simply bought into particular ideas on faith, on the faith of those who imparted them. And they perhaps stuck with you when you grew up and in that sense began to establish what beliefs worked for you. You did not work through all those beliefs. So in general, the beliefs that hang around that you do not prefer are products of having bought into them at a young age. But once you nail them down, you can very easily extrapolate how they have you acting and you can just as easily frame in your imagination the alternative, the new preferred belief, how that would allow you to feel and how one would act to have that. And now by acting that way, you are creating your life consciously according to preference and in that sense, replacing, and we use the term very loosely, your old programming, not by getting rid of it. There's nowhere to get rid of anything too. You are all the entire universe, but by replacing it with a preferred new belief. And it can be that simple. As this interaction unfolds, we will discuss more of this. At this timing, Allow me now to thank you all for your willingness to co-create this interaction. For your willingness on some level to entertain the thoughts that there may just be a little bit more to your life than meets your eye. For from our perspective, this is a given. And in fact, our understanding of your five senses, as you call them, or that they are not so much windows to the world that allow the world to flood into your consciousness. More appropriately from the, shall we say, perspective of your higher consciousness, they are filters, filtering out 99.9% .9 of all reality so that you can maintain a particular very localized focus. Therefore, again, allow us to thank you and ask you now, in that light, how we may be of service to you. Shedding. <laughs> All right, I'll say, before we continue this interaction, allow me, if you will, to impart to you more or less a schedule of what will be occurring over the first, next few months, and in fact, what has been occurring for approximately the last two years. First of all, you will notice more and more for the next few weeks, the next few months, that the reference which we shall use to refer to ourselves by is, in fact, we, not I so much anymore. I, myself, Bashar, a discreet individual, have been working or playing, if you will, through this channel for the last approximately going on two years of your time to allow him in that sense to be attuned. The reason for the attunement in that sense is that there is another individual in our society, another one altogether, who more or less will exclusively come through this physiological channel. What you have been getting for the last, again, year or so, has been a blended energy. And at most times, though I have referred to myself as I and Bashar, it has been a blending. The past two or so months of your time, however, 
the proportion of that blending has been changing, has been shifting. And more of what you are directly witnessing at this point is the other individual, another male upon my planet, who will be doing from approximately your 1992 year onward, your January month, exclusively these types of interactions. Perhaps exclusively is not exactly the appropriate word, for I will always, in that sense, be lending fragments of what you would consider to be my personality as Bashar to these interactions. Very often within these interactions, though one particular individual may be at the forefront, what is being tapped is a totality, many individuals from our society and also other societies. <coughs> Therefore, if you do in that sense begin to notice certain differences, certain shiftings, you may attribute them to the fact that this other entity in that sense is taking over. At a particular timing, not yet decided, there will be a new reference altogether assigned, a new name if you will. For now, Bashar will do. <laughs> Again, we have no names per se. In our society, we do refer to each other from soul to soul as we are a tel-empathic society. But the idea is for your convenience, there will be a new label. Therefore, we alert you to that fact so that you can begin to observe the shifts, observe the changing. There is much commonality between individuals in our society. We are a unified society. We, however, do not sacrifice diversity. And one of the fortes of our very society is the fact that we maintain, retain diversity and have unity in diversity. The unity will always be expressed in a particular way in a particular manner, with a particular attitude. So in that sense, individuals communicating to you through any channel will in general have a similar energy. What I am saying is though there will be shifts, there will still be enough of a commonality for you to identify with that which you have loved from our stream, from our society. So there is no need to think that I am splitting, if you will, at the expense of the joy that we share. No. The joy that we share will be ongoing, continual. And though you will again refer referentially to us by a different name, you will not so much notice the difference. And I as an individual will also be, loosely speaking, from time to time, available. Therefore, I wish in that sense to impart to you that we, from this point forward, will in general refer to ourselves as we. There may be exceptions from time to time. And you can now understand the significance of that reference. Keep your ears out. There will be a naming, a new name at a future interaction. We thank you, therefore, and ask you now how we may be of service. Shitting. Over there, then there. Bashar, from your perspective, are you more aware of yourself as a multidimensional being in the sense that you're aware of being in more than one place at a time? No. Than we are? No. I am still exploring physicality. Therefore, to a large degree, we perceive ourselves as discrete individuals. However, again, one thing we often share is the idea that each moment contains all that you need. It is its own kit, its own package. We also share the idea that you always know what you need to know when you need to know it. So if any given moment it suits our purposes, we can tap into it consciously. You can too. Simply that we validate what we get and in general, your society does not. You perceive it as being meanderings of your imagination. 
but you see it is your imagination through which you would have such vision. That is the conduit which allows you to connect to other aspects of your beingness. It has been more or less invalidated on your planet as an escape, a fantasy generating portion of your personality through which individuals escape, but that is only one of its functions, one of its faces. Your imagination is a tool and can be used in that way. So what we are saying is that from our perspective, yes, we can, in a given moment, be aware of that totality, but only through the auspice of our imagination, which we validate as being just as real as any other aspect of reality. Follow-up question? Do go on. Will the self that I am eventually integrate the experience of all the other aspects of myself, or am I one of the aspects that's going to be integrated into a larger self or a larger package? Oh, thank you very much. From the perspective that you now define yourself to be right now, it will always seem that things are integrating into you. Therefore, the apparency will be that you have a particular individuality which will be maintained. Now, the paradox is that this happens to each and every individual. Again, this is an infinite concept rendered through a finite reality. But the idea is each perspective will perceive that creation is integrating into them. So therefore, each will experience that special, unique blending and integration. Does that make any sense? Yes. And is there a larger self that eventually the many aspects of self will integrate into and there'll be a unified consciousness? In a sense, yes. And from that perspective, you will be able to tap into things simultaneously or, if you wish, one at a time. And once that As you unfold into more of that totality, first of all, understand that that is a non-physical existence. You can, from that perspective, create nuances of particular physical existences. And once that integration is made, then one is truly functioning as a multi-dimensional being? Non-physical? Perhaps you can say so, yes. Thank you. Though, again... From our perspective, you already are functioning that way. Only you are expressing the aspect of your multidimensionality that is corresponding to focus. I know that perhaps does not make much sense, but that is an idea also. It does. Thank you. And to you as well. We thank you. Sharing over there. And to you. Good day. Good day. Exciting energies tonight. I just want to, uh, many of us have tuned into the change and it seems like there was a, a much bigger leap tonight in terms of um, Andrew's future self having a much higher percentage. And uh, Thanks for noticing. <laughs> that came from the future self. <laughs> um, so Andrew received a letter from Australia to Verona. Do share. And um, she had some questions. I think that a lot of them are answered already tonight. But Oh, what a coincidence. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do want to read it um, exactly how she had asked the question. So that All right. Do a good job. Everybody's listening. Okay. I <laughs> um, the She's been in contact with energies from SSI. Oh, yes. And, um, the name that has been ascribed to it is Dharma. A male, yes. And their first question is, who is Dharma? You have already answered the question within the question. Yes. A male individual from our society. Not one of the ones in this particular blending. Um, number two is, I long to cooperate and fulfill any exciting, helpful thing that... Any exciting, helpful thing, but help. I don't know what they are. And please be sure it's no good saying I know because truly I do not. <laughs> well, all right. We were not going to say that, but we understand the anticipation that we would. Do proceed. I am a very limited human being. Please give me a little push in the, in the direction 
that is right for me. I also hear the name Laura, but can't grasp that either. All right, that is another reference altogether. We will simply comment upon the first. First of all, understand that you are all masters of limitation. We do not mean this in a derogatory way. Limitation is a particular style of exploration. And having mastered it in that sense is very positive. But the idea is you need not hide behind the fact that you have chosen limitation to hide from yourself information you already have. Now, we were not going to say you already know it, but the idea is she does. What this allows me to share, however, to extrapolate, has to do with her willingness to validate what she gets. In other words, there is the opportunity for interaction. We have already defined, as she has already defined, the direction of where the communications stem from. However, only she directly can access that particular information. So the following, shall we say, guidelines will be particularly helpful. First of all, whether or not she has any history of meditation, Allow her to become very comfortable. Sit down in whatever position is comfortable. Not the ones the books say are the only way to do it. Whatever is physically comfortable. Allow her to take three deep breaths as a beginning. After the initiation of the first three deep breaths, simply allow her to slowly breathe in fully. If perhaps she would like a reference, breathe in love, breathe in light. And then upon the exhaling, slow and full, breathe out tension, negativity. This is quite a typical technique upon your planet for relaxation. The idea is that once she is able to feel somewhat relaxed, perhaps a bit lightheaded, don't pass out. Do not need to hyperventilate. formulate in her mind clearly what it is she wishes to know. The formulation of the question in and of itself is most of the process. As we have often shared, when you ask a question, you already know the answer and are simply phrasing the answer you already know as a question, putting it outside of yourself for external validation. But the process of merely phrasing the question focuses your consciousness, focuses your mind, and also allows the answer to be more clear. For the clearer the question, the clearer the answer. So if she will begin to compile her questions of what it is she actually wishes to learn from this entity and ask them the very simple process, and listen up, I wouldn't want her to miss it, it is that simple, is to simply, after asking the question, listen for the answer. Can do so, again, literally, physically with her ears, can expect to hear a voice and listen very carefully, as though that voice will be very low in volume. But nevertheless, place her full attention upon the listening, and then... When the answer comes, as it will, perhaps quite quickly, validate it. This is the step where most people cut off communications. Very often, in the beginning, because these communications take place through the path of least resistance, what will be communicated will be through a framework of mentality that she already has. So the information may seem at first to be nothing new. But do not allow that to be a proof for invalidating it. Let it come through in whatever form it will and validate it. I have asked the question. This is the answer. Accept it as the answer. Lastly, when phrasing her questions carefully, clearly, concisely, asking them and accepting and validating the answers that she gets, act upon them. 
in any way, shape, or form, in any given moment, where it is possible to do so. All the information that we share with your society is only as useful as an individual's willingness to apply it, to act. So therefore, she can get all the information in the known multiverse and it will do her no quote-unquote good unless she acts upon it. That willingness to put the answers into action will then create the new opportunities to then choose from, act upon. Therefore, for now, that will do. However, again, what is occurring is communication. It is available for her, but it is an unconditional agreement. She doesn't have to do anything in that sense to deserve to have the fulfillment of the agreement. But her willingness to allow the information through and act on it will determine how far she will go with it. Does that answer the question? Oh, I believe so, and it's very useful for me too. Um, in my own meditation, to particularly formulating the question. So, thank you. And to you as well. Again, the formulation of a concise question is a focusing process. When I say you already have the answer, many individuals go, all right, yeah, sure. <laughs> but the idea is when I then say a particular answer and they go, yes, that's right, that proves they knew it. Otherwise, how do they know it was right? <laughs> Think about it. Thank you very much.